Chapter 8, Learning Objective 6, Account for the Derecognition of PPE Assets. When assets are disposed of, they are derecognized, which means that the cost and accumulated depreciation are removed from the accounting records. There are two steps involved when derecognizing an asset. One, the depreciation must be updated to the date of disposal, and two, the asset cost and accumulated depreciation is removed from the records and we record any gains or losses. Let's use our ongoing $20,000 asset purchase as an example. After five years of depreciation at $3,600 per year straight line, the accumulated depreciation would end up being $18,000, resulting in a carrying value of $2,000, which is equal to the residual value. Now let's consider four different disposal scenarios for this asset, starting with selling it at the $2,000 carrying or residual value for cash. We would record the derecognition with a journal entry that debits cash for the $2,000 proceeds. We would debit the accumulated depreciation for the $18,000 and credit the equipment asset account for the original cost of $20,000. These two lines make the asset completely disappear from the balance sheet. When the proceeds equal the carrying value, there is no gain or loss recorded, and our journal entry balances. In our second scenario, let's say that the asset was sold for $3,000 cash. The journal entry starts with a $3,000 debit to cash instead of $2,000 in the last scenario. We still have the debit to accumulated depreciation for $18,000 and the credit to the asset account for equipment for the original $20,000 cost to remove the asset. Now you'll notice that the debits and credits don't equal each other, and for our entry to balance, we need a credit of $1,000. Well, that credit is a gain on disposal, and that's the account we use. This is considered an addition to income like revenue, so that's why it's a credit. In our third scenario, let's say that the asset is sold below its carrying value for $500 cash. The journal entry is similar, but this time the debit to cash is only $500. The debits to accumulated depreciation for $18,000 and credit to the equipment asset account for the original $20,000 to remove the asset is still there, but now our debits and credits are out by a balance of $1,500, which must be made up by a debit, and that would be a loss on disposal. This reduces income, just like expenses. Now let's say in our fourth scenario, the disposal involves an exchange where the company acquires a new asset with a cost of $10,000 and the old asset has a trade-in allowance of $6,000, with the remainder of $4,000 being paid by the company in cash. This is an interesting issue in this situation, where we must consider if the trade-in allowance is realistic or higher than the fair value, which acts as an inducement or incentive to make the trade. Under the accounting rules of IFRS and ASPE, the new asset must be recorded at its fair value, which is comprised of any cash plus the fair value of any asset given up or disposed of. Now, cash is naturally at its fair value, so the issue then is with the fair value of the old asset that's being disposed of. If the fair value of the old asset was $5,000, and not the $6,000 given by the seller as a trade-in allowance, then the new asset must be recorded at a value of $9,000, comprised of the $4,000 in cash, plus the $5,000 fair value of the old asset. That $10,000 selling price of the new asset isn't relevant. Now let's apply this to our ongoing asset example and say that the old asset would be exchanged for a new asset with a cost of $25,000. We know the old asset had a cost of $20,000 and accumulated depreciation of $18,000 to end up with a carrying value of $2,000. Let's also say that the seller offers a trade-in allowance for the old asset of $2,500 but the fair value is only $1,800. The $2,500 trade-in allowance results in an additional $22,500 having to be paid in cash to add up to the new cost of $25,000. The fair value in this case is less than the trade-in value, and therefore the cost of the new asset must then be the $22,500 in cash plus the $1,000 $800 fair value of the old asset for a final value of $24,300 rather than the $25,000 cost. The inflated trade-in value simply increases the price of the new asset. Based on fair values of cash and the old asset, 
the new asset is really worth only $24,300. This is much like how car dealers work with trades. If you want a higher trade in value than, let's say, the black book value, which is effectively the fair value, the dealer has to make up the difference by increasing the price of the new car. To record this exchange, our journal entry includes a debit to a new equipment asset account for $24,300. Notice again the same $18,000 debit to accumulate depreciation and $20,000 credit to the old asset account. These are exactly the same in every disposal scenario. We have a credit to cash of $22,500 and that leaves a balancing amount of $200 on the debit side to make our journal entry balance. That debit must be considered a loss on disposal and can be proven by taking the carrying value of the old asset of $2,000 less the $1,800 fair value.